Hey guys, what's going on? Rob Roy here with Adventure Bound. I wanted to show you my 2012 Mercedes-Benz Sprinter van converted by Sportsmobile West. Turn to the Sun Road, 2020. How are you guys doing? How are you doing, baby? Good. It's beautiful here. You think? So I bought this from a guy who had this custom converted by Sportsmobile out in California, and uh, overall it's been a really awesome van. My wife and I, and my son who's right here, have been using it for the last year, year and a half on some awesome adventures around the country, and it's been really, really fun. I want to talk about some of the highs and lows and some things that I really love, and some things that I really don't care for and what I would change in the future, but overall, awesome van. So starting things off, uh, you can see right now, here's the living area. One of the things that was in the van when we bought it that we removed was a third captain's chair. So we put this rug in right here and uh, it is permanently bolted. We actually tack welded the bolts underneath the van so that you can take it out. It's not a, it's not a quick release, but it is able to be released in about five minutes, but that has really opened up a lot of space for us in the van. Another thing we did was we actually swiveled the seats. Hey buddy. So we put the swivelers in ourselves after we bought the van and that has been really great to be able to utilize a lot more space. As you can imagine when we bought it, the seats did not swivel and this oh. other captain's chair was here. Mommy. Oh. But now with everything uh, the way we like it, this seat swivels almost all the way. This seat's gone. It's been really great to open up the van uh, for utilizing it for camping adventures. Next thing we got is uh, really important to us is the family's having a car seat. The captain's chair that was here did have the latch system, but we were able to just as easily uh, use a lap belt to put the car seat in, which has been really great for my son. He's also got a TV here with some headphones for on those really long road trips. But this has been really great. This couch converts into a bed for sleeping, and this one comes out as well, and I'll show you that here in a second. The power on the van, uh -uh. Uh, everything's controlled up here. Uh, you got the circuit breaker panel, the main battery, uh, on and off switch. We have two 16 gallon water tanks, uh, uh -uh. 32 gallons total of water. Uh -uh. A propane heater and also a propane stove, which work really, really well. Although we find that we don't use the stove too much. Uh, we have just a little aftermarket quick from Walmart, you know, $30 camping stove outside to keep the, the smell outside the van. But it's here if you need it on those really cold days, especially, you know, warming up some water in a hurry. Um, and then we also have a nice mini fridge which didn't work really well. The cool thing about this is that it's, it doesn't burn off propane, it, it's just electric. So if you're big in RVs, you know that's propane, you really have to have the van level, which we try and do anyway, but this thing will run the whole time we're driving, even if we're not level for boondocking, it works beautifully. Nice storage compartment here for the pantry. Um, several different outlets that work, as long as the inverter is running, and a microwave, which works as well, as long as you got the inverter going, which is really great. You can see we've got a TV there, which works with a, a wireless, a Bluetooth system. You can put a DVD in here up in the up in the center console area and it plays back either throughout the van on that screen when you're parked or in the whole van in, in general. Three three fans that go both in and out. Uh, three fantastic fans. I'll get those going right here. These have been awesome because if you can just if you open the windows at night on both sides you can bring one fan in, pull one fan out. It really creates a nice breeze and this is on setting number two. That's setting number three. Just really awesome, especially uh, if you're somewhere, especially because we don't have an AC unit. If you're up in the mountains or at any sort of elevation, it gets cool at night. Opening the windows has been a really good way to ventilate the van at night so it doesn't get all foggy, but also just to uh, keep things nice and cool. Uh, as I mentioned, does not have an AC unit. That is one of the downsides, but this being a 2012, if you know anything about van life and the van market, the technology really wasn't there. Um, we're just not getting the lithium ion batteries and companies such as Storytel Overland are working with other companies such as Volta to come up with these battery systems that can run off eight, run AC units without even a generator. The Winnebago Rebel uh, you, has an AC unit we have to be plugged in as of uh, 2000, it came out 2018 and 19. But this does not have an AC unit, but the fans really make it okay at night. Next, I'm gonna show you the bed system and how everything converts. So a little bit about our process at night when we get to a campground, what we have to do, obviously got a car seat here, what you're missing Mama. is two dogs and all of our stuff. You could put another car seat right here. Not really ideal for an adult situation, um, but you do have a shoulder uh, seat belt, which unclips here, but perfect for a car seat number one or number two, second car seat. And then if you wanted to with a third seat that goes there, that works as well. But we're gonna show you how to convert Mama. this into a bed and how to 
how to convert the main bed into a queen-ish size bed. Really simple, just a, a lap seat belt that goes across. We put the car seat over here, just kind of keep it out of the way. Really good at night too, because this chair does not swivel all the way. So it's a nice place to put the car seat, put stuff on top uh, and it's out of the way. Next thing is I tuck all those seat belts back underneath here. And this does come out. I'll put the pillow up here and bring this down as such. And then this comes up, which is really nice. Buddy, does this look familiar? Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. I guess you'd call this a twin-ish. Um, really awesome for a kid, for two kids, for a small adult. My wife, who's actually filming right now, is eight months pregnant, and we just drove across the country um, from the east coast to the west coast. And she's Daddy. up here with our son, just so he doesn't fall off the big bed. You know, obviously not enough room for a pack and play per se, but really great situation there uh, if you like it. So I'll just show you. It's a little small for me. I'm six foot, and it's a little tight, but not really designed for somebody my height to be sleeping left, right in the van. Where the adult sleep is up here. Uh, so this model we haven't really talked about yet is called, by Sportsmobile, it's called a Lopez Mommy. 55. What you can't see right now is the garage in this thing is huge. It is 170, right now it feels like a 144 on the inside. It's because the garage is, is really massive. So I'll show you how that works. Mommy. So first thing is, this comes Mommy. out down here. Hey buddy. Ah. Mommy. Mommy. So that's half of our bed setup right now. I wanna throw this out there as well. This setup is actually really nice for when you're driving because there's no AC in the van. All you got is what's in the, it's in the cabin. So having that closed has been really useful on long road trips just to close it out. You got a nice, it's essentially just a really big van or car and it, it actually cools at night. So we put a little fan up here for our son just in case. All right. One more cushion that goes here. So now, Here's the bed setup in the back. Pretty sweet. Again, I'm six foot, 72 inches, and I can literally touch my arms on both sides. I've got about an inch and a half above my head, and I've got about three, three and a half feet of vertical space back here to put all my toys. Skis, snowboard, dirt bike with the handlebar sticking up, maybe even a small motorcycle, uh, and some sort of paragliding motor fan. But when we sleep here at night, very supportive with these strong metal cables, and you sleep like this. And as two adults, it, one of my biggest complaints is the cabinet setup. It's, again, this van was designed to be a gear hauler. So with that, you can sleep four people, you know, two adults, two kids. You can sleep two adults and a third adult, but it's tight. But it is nice and convenient to be able to grab in here. Uh, second fan, and there's a third fan back here. And you can sleep with either your head on this side or your head on the other side. But either way, another big complaint that I have about this layout is although it has, it creates a lot of room for a huge garage. I'm always having to put my feet and my head on an edge. Those are some of my biggest complaints, but other than that, it's been really sweet. If you wanna come in the back, I'll show you from this angle. All right, so again, this is the garage. Really awesome for the van. Uh, some of the neat things that uh, this particular model of a Sprinter van can do is these doors simply open. I've seen the newer ones, they've got a little different layout. Some of them I don't believe actually open like this, but some of them do, but this one does, which has been really sweet. Here's the garage, pretty awesome. Again, here's how tall I am, six foot. Uh, and here's the bed. So it's about three feet at least of uh, vertical space. Um, when you're not using the bed mode, this simply comes up and it's got a two part latch right here with a little safety pin. And there you go. And so now I'd say it's at least four and a half, five feet, if not a little bit more of distance. All the way to the back, it's a huge garage, but I would prefer to have more of a living setup, more living space setup, rather than having a huge gear hauler space. Just because I've got one kid and one on the way and two dogs. Uh, I, I personally, having a garage is what's typical for most camper vans, I would be more ideal for me. A lot of uh, attachment points here. This has all been converted by Sportsmobile on Fresno. So this is nothing I've done here. Uh, really good floors, very durable material. I can literally throw anything back here. Here's the third fan we talked about. Uh, these vents actually came with the van, uh, but we found that they they weren't necessarily leaking, but they were just doing what vents do. They're letting water in, and at night when the rain would blow a certain direction, your feet hang out about here, and the water would just literally drip. 
So if we have stuff on the ground, it leaks. So we find that we actually close these up permanently. So that's sealed. Gotta have ventilation in the van at night so the van can breathe. So we open the wind, we open the fans no matter what, which allows air to escape. This is another little setup here for the awning. All right, so awning is super simple. Plugs in right here. Easy day. Two legs that come out. Always good to have the awning not perfectly level, but actually a little bit to the side. That way in a really bad rainstorm, the water leaks out to the side instead of capturing it all in the middle here, then causing a lot of weight to collapse and that could be a really bad day. Awning's been really nice to have, obviously on a super sunny day, on a rainy day, it's great to work with the door set up here. It just allows you to come in out of the van. I've seen some vans such as a Storyteller Overland Mode 4x4. These are automatic and electric. Uh, they have a automatic retracting if the weather gets bad. So this is a little old school, but it works great. Uh, good product for uh, the, the kid to help set up. Other cool things with the van that we've done, uh, we actually put on some new wheels and tires a few months back. Uh, <laughs> these are the Falcon AT3 uh, all-terrain tires. Been really awesome. Uh, and these are 17-inch wheels uh, by Black Rhino. When we bought the van, I believe it came with 16-inch uh, stock wheels and tires, so these are 17s. They're really nice. A lot of people think this van's four-wheel drive. It's not. Uh, they didn't make them in 2012, but it's been really great to have these nonetheless because uh, they look badass. Next thing I'm gonna go up and uh, show you the roof. So I'll take the camera and we'll go up on the roof rack. All right, here's the roof setup. Uh, been pretty awesome. Here's our four solar panels, which is really great. Uh, when I bought the van, uh, we actually, one of the first things we did was take it to Sportsmobile West in Fresno, California, and got two brand new 600 amp hour AGM batteries. Since we got those, have not had a single issue with power. Uh, we run the fans uh, at least one or two all night. We use the microwave here and there have our lights on and it's been really awesome. I have yet to really use the cargo box, but it's here if we want it. And uh, obviously it works with the fan right there as well. Other fun things with the van, which I really enjoyed, I'll take you back to the back here. Come here, buddy. Put your head. As I said, it's got two 16 gallon water tanks on board. Best way to fill it up is on the side here. And the water, if you flip one of these nozzles, turn on the inside, you turn the water on, water comes in. This is also, one of the two outdoor showers that we have. So you plug this in here, you stick it in, you turn it to the left, that's on slash hotter, and you come back to the right, it's colder. It gets really hot and uh, produces actually pretty good water flow. So it's been really awesome for cleaning mountain bikes, cleaning car seats that have been uh, spit up on. Uh, super useful when you're out in the country boondocking. Uh, this water gets really hot and it's awesome. More storage in the van here. Got some, some pockets here on the doors. Some other soft pockets, been really nice. Uh, one thing I haven't talked about yet, two separate lights on the back here and also two on the side. Really great for at night, trying to see where you're backing in. It does have a backup camera with, without a sensor, but it's got one. So you flick those lights on, flick them on the side, you can really see a nice camp spot to make sure you're doing all things right. Got an outdoor uh, outlet, which has been really nice if you want to run something while you're at a campground. Here's how you fill up your water tanks. Second outdoor shower, which works really well, an exhaust system, and this is where you hook up with your shore power. Got a nice big propane sticker right here. Uh, I've never had to fill the propane up. We've only used it a handful of times for the heater, but it works really well nonetheless. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. So this is the exhaust for the S-Bar heating system. Uh, what's really cool about this system is that it actually burns diesel fuel from the tank. There's like a separate small area that, that the Mercedes includes when you fill up with fuel at a gas station. It actually takes the diesel fuel into a, a small separate area, which it burns. So it's really great because you don't have to worry about burning propane. But this van actually does have two heaters. I'll show you back on the inside. We've only used the S-Bar system and this is the exhaust for it right here. When we need to drain our water, uh, you simply uh, turn a little screw back here and pull the nozzle and all the water comes out for all the gray water. Obviously no black water on board, so that's never been an issue. Uh, and this is uh, more exhaust as well. I'll show you what it's like uh, on the, the driver's door here. Obviously we got the car seat in. I'd be remiss if I didn't say one of my absolute favorite features of this van is being able to hold my big water bottle. So this is a Hydroflask 40 ounce. I'll put a link in the video. Awesome, I'm sure you guys have all heard about it. Fun to put stickers on, which is why I like it when it's uh, really tall like this versus the 32. Um, but it fits it perfectly. It's like it was designed for. I can't find another car uh, that you drive around that, that has the capability. So really awesome when you're in a van and you're driving around doing van life things that you can put your water bottle in there. 
One of the other uh, features that I really enjoy about Mercedes Sprinters, and I'm not sure what year they started or if they've always been there, but it's this step right here. Uh, been really great. You, you don't think about it when you when you get a van. Oh, I need to get up in the windshield to clean it. But when you own one, you're like, I need to. How do I get all the bug bites? So even just at the gas station, stepping up right here, nice place to reach up and really clean off the van that you need to do without hurting anything. Take you back on the inside of the van here. I'll show you the uh, some of the interior uh, systems that we talked about before. I'm gonna go ahead and put everything back uh, like we're going to get on drive mode real quick. So underneath the bench seat here actually has a lot of our systems. Uh, no good real no real good way to access it there's a little door right here so you can see our two 16 gallon water tanks uh, these are a lot of the switches here if i wanted to uh, add water permanently to the van uh, that's a good way to do it uh, here we've got the s bar heating system uh, you can see the comfort hot stick right there in sandy oregon uh, there's what? a subwoofer back here that's the water pump and this is the fan for the s bar system the other one of the other heating systems we have in the van uh, comes out right here. This is the propane, which works really well as well. And all the controllability for this is up here uh, in the van. So if I wanted to turn the s system on, these serve as on and off switches, um, but also you have to turn the furnace on, which converts the, the hot water as well. Uh, that's a fan speed. And then this is the thermostat for it, but it's really an on and off switch. So once I kick that on, you can hear the fan kicking on and it does its job. And then for the propane, uh, the guy that had this converted put in two heaters, uh, which has been really nice to have uh, when it gets super cold or if one system uh, maybe fails you, but we haven't had a need for the second heater. Uh, this is the inverter, really awesome. You can see now the microwave just kicked on like that. Really great. Carbon monoxide detector up top there. Main switch for the, uh, the batteries, uh, separate outlets there for running all your power. And here's a closer look at the uh, circuit breaker panel and inside here as well so there's the uh, magnum inverter which has really worked beautifully uh, i actually have had to replace uh, one of these circuit breakers here for the d5 that's the s-bar heater so if you know what you're doing watch some youtube videos you can figure it out but uh, it's good though your electronics so let's look at the tv we talked before and one of the things i didn't show you yet has another storage area with the headphones and i really can't get back there in the video but a uh, huge storage area uh, for putting all of the the panels uh, that uh, block out all the, the sunlight and the windows. All right guys, so that pretty much wraps up uh, our video here. Overall, it's been a really awesome van to us and our family. It's a Sprinter van 170, like I said. A lot of pros having a 144, some pros going to 170 extended, but uh, with the space inside, the garage being what it is, it's been really uh, useful to take on all of our ventures. Not four wheel drive, but we really haven't had any issues yet. Uh, we've taken a lot of forest roads in the snow in a couple inches and it's been fine, uh, especially loaded down. Uh, Sportsmail West, really great company. I recommend you check them out. Put a link in the show notes here. Uh, for my podcast, Adventure Bound, I actually had the pleasure of interviewing uh, the president of Sportsmail West, awesome guy, Jonathan Feld. Really went into detail about their company and everything they've been doing. They've been converting vans for the last 35, 40-ish years. Uh, they are one of the best in the business, doing a really great job. Uh, really have no major complaints. So if you have any questions, uh, put them in the comments. Uh, reach out to my Instagram at AdventureBound and uh, listen to the podcast at AdventureBound where I've actually interviewed a lot of people that are much cooler than me that are living these things full time, talk to you all about van life. All right, guys, that's it for me. Take care. See ya. There you go. Okay, two hands. Three points of contact. Nice. Good form.